And welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. 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 That was supposed to be a joke. Anyways, <laughs> last episode, we found the missing Federation troopers. And they're all but dead. But it was They were killed by some strange ent dark entity that possessed a bunch of splinters. But we had arrived here to the Great Temple... Which is a giant temple that's on the temple grounds, obviously. And we're gonna we are gonna explore this area right here. Now, this next room, we're about ready to fight our first boss. Uh, yeah, so be prepared when you walk into this room. So as soon as we walk inside, eh, something it doesn't look like it's something's blocking our path here. And as you guys can see, there's a bunch of splinters coming down. But one of them looks bigger than the other ones. One of the cocoons there looks better, bigger than the other ones. And darkness, 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 darkness is is possessing these splinters. So we're gonna have to take care of these splinters. And we should be used to them now. We fought them last episode. Um, there's actually speaking of these dark splinters, the ones that we had to fight in the last episode. I forgot to mention there is like a glitch that you can pull off. In that area where the GF, where we found the GFC soldiers, the Gal Galactic Federation troopers, um, if you go and get the missile expansion before you interact with the soldier, the crate will respawn itself and it'll spawn another missile tank. So you can actually get 101% in this game, if I remember correctly, just by exploiting that little glitch. I don't know if they did that if it's in the Wii version of the game, but I know in the GameCube version it was there was a pa there was a glitch where you can get an extra missile tank. <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and kill this splinter. As soon as we kill all the splinters, that big ol' one hatches. Immediately scan it if you're going for all the all the guide, uh, all the logbook entries. This is the Alpha Splinter. The male, uh, male of the War Pact. Gigantic predator. Very swift and strong. It uses ramming ta attacks to defeat its foes. Alright, let's read its bio here. It says, Splinter War Packs are dominated by the largest male. Alpha Splinters use their tremendous size, strength, and speed to subdue and kill prey. Pre Paving the way for the smaller bro broodlings. I never heard that word before too much. Um, but yeah, immediately scan this guy. And this is going to be really hard, and they kind of give you a little tactic on how to strafe. And that's just uh, while you're locked onto an enemy, push the B button while you're circling around them, and you can kind of strafe around them, like do like a little dash. Because as soon as you shoot him a couple of times, he will immediately go away, and this is the only chance you're going to find an Alpha Splinter. So, immediately scan it when it pauses. And as soon as that happens, the darkness comes over and takes him over. Immediately scan him, he's the boss of the, the, boss of the area. The Dark Alpha Splinter. This is Alpha Male, Alpha Male of Darkling War Pact. Gigantic Predator with sim, Symbiote Enhanced Strength, Speed, and Armor. Splinter alpha males are the first to be targeted by darkling possession. possession. Dark alpha splinters grow in strength and durability, making them even greater threat than normal. Oh great, so now we had to deal with the, you know, the big old splinter, but now there's a dark version of it. And as you guys can see, there's its health bar off the, off the top screen. This guy is going to lunge at you, and not only that, he's going to spit purple goop at you. So just just strafe around him as much as, as, much as you can. Um... You can't die from this. This is kind of a kind of a hard fight at the beginning of the game because these guys are really fast. But if as long as you strafe around them and just like pump them with charge shots and missiles, you should be fine. I usually just go and do the do a charge shot and then just shoot a missile. But if you do that, you should be able to take them down pretty easy. For the first boss, it's not too bad. <laughs> But he's kind of hard, just a little bit. His damage output's kind of ridiculous. What is what is this thing? I don't know what this thing is. Unknown technology. Alright, well, let's go and collect it then. And it kind of merged with us. wonder what this technology is. 
System alert. Unknown item acquired. Alien technology has bonded to armor systems. Threat scan complete. No negative impact on suit performance. Oh, okay. Well, I wonder what that is that we just picked up. But it's no matter because now the entryway is open to us. Let's keep on going forward. Um, but let me go and kind of like talk about bosses in general in this game. There's going to be a lot of missable scans in this game. Mainly with bosses, because I'm going to be pretty much guaranteeing you each boss in this game, um, minus the mini, mini dungeon bosses, like, like, go, you'll understand what I mean when, when we get to that. Each, each main boss in this game has like two, at least two scans. Make sure you get them, because if you don't get them like right when they spawn, you are going to miss them. So if you're going for the logbook entries, yeah, just be on top of your toes with your scan game. But anyways, what is this? Let's go and investigate this area. It's like giant energy source of some sort. Who are you? There's something there. Do not be afraid. I am Eumos, Sentinel of the Lumoth. Luminoth, I'm sorry. Please listen and hear our world's peril. Long ago, a cosmic object fell to our planet Ether, explo exploding with great force. A rift was torn in time and space, and a strange power flowed over the world. Where once there was one ether, now there are two. One of light, one of shadow, each existing in its own dimension. It was the end of peace on ether, for a new race was born that day on the dark world. One filled with hate and terrible power. They are the Ing. The Ying are creatures of shadow and darkness, knowing nothing of peace and, mer peace and mercy. For decades, we stood against them, yet we now lie on the verge of defeat. When D Dark Aether was born, our planetary energy was divided half of for our world and half for theirs. Should one gain control of this energy, the other will perish. Before you arrived, the Ing had stolen a device from us. One that collects planetary energy. With it, they have weakened our planet to the verge of collapse. But fortune smiled upon us this day, for the energy transfer module is now bonded with you. With it, you can help us. Help us restore our world. You're our only hope, Samus. Should we fall, the Aang will look to the stars for new planets to ravage and conquer. Your species could be their next victims. The Ing have taken our energy to three temples on Dark Aether. Find these temples and transfer the em energy from them to your own, to our own. I have updated your map system with the location of another temple. There is no knowledge there that can help you on your way. I also have updated your translator module. You can now access d devices and doors coated with violet holograms. Many lands are now open to you. Prepare well for your journey. The Ing will know you possess the ener energy transfer module. They will try to recover it at all costs. Return to me once you have restored the energy to a temple. I will aid you as I can. May the light of ether shine upon you. 
And with that, we got our mission for this game. We just met Yumos, one of the last surviving members of the Luminov race. They kind of represent the Chozo in a way. They kind of are like them in a way. Well, how I've never seen him do this. That's kind of cool. He has a ball of light and he draws all the moths there. That's kind of neat. But yeah, he he g g is the last surviving member of the Luminoth tribe. There are a bunch of others, but they're in stasis right now, asleep, because the Ing are too powerful. But anyways, Yumos is giving us our mission. We must go to each of the temples and collect the planetary energy from Dark Ether and transfer it back to the to regular Ether. That was all the also the beast that we encountered in the Dark World when we went through that portal in the very first episode. Ugh, I, I do not like Ying. <laughs> anyways, let's scan Yumos here. Luminoth Umos, indigenous sentinel species of planet Ether. Subject is Umos, a sentinel of Luminoth, guardian of the species of the sacred temple. Subject is Umos, a sentinel of the Luminoth. Scans indicate numerous beneficial abilities, including heightened reflexes, durability, psionics, and flight. Ability to generate and manipulate energy on par with that of the Chozo. Dating scans suggest this is the, his age of 2.15 centi cycles. The only known active member of the species, remaining Luminoth locked in protective stasis until crisis is resolved. So he's in charge of pretty much saving his race. And we're going to help him. Scan this thing behind him. This is another thing for your your um, logbook here. It says, new research. This is the energy controller. This uh, outputs the planetary energy to the other temples of the world of, of uh, Ether here. This is the chamber that collects the energy for the planet. That's pretty neat. But uh, you can talk to him, and he's the only character in the whole entire game you can actually speak with. If you get close to him, push A. Well, I don't know why my game's not letting me. If you get close to him, push A. He'll tell you where to go. If you if you get lost for any reason, he'll tell you where to go. He's going to tell you to go to Aegon Ways, which is our next destination. But he also upgraded our transfer module. If you guys remember these purple holograms, we can now scan them. These have lore in them. This is for the Luminoth lore. This is for Origins. I'm going to take a look at these guys later because uh, there's a lot of information in these lores, but I'd rather not spend too much time reading lore a lot of times. I'll read them again, like, maybe one day when we don't have too much to do in the game. I'll read some of the lore for you guys, but uh, as of right now, there's a lore right there and you need to pick it up. So, now that we have the Violet Translator module, we can now open up Violet Doors. If you actually scan these things, these are the stasis modules that I was talking about how the Luminoth are kind of sleeping right now. These are the modules they're in. That's kind of neat. So, as of right now, we need to help Umos in order to save his race. There's a door right here that is violet. Let's go ahead and open. This allows the pathway to Aegon Wastes, which is the first actual area, dungeon-like type area in the game. Let's scan this thing right here. This is a new enemy. Light Flyer. These guys, essentially, if you kill them, they'll have more use in Dark Aether. But as of right now, just one charge shot will kill them. <laughs> in Dark Aether, these guys help out a lot. And you'll understand why when we get there. But, anyways, let's keep going onwards. Alright, so let's go ahead and scan this, and we should be getting our elevator to go on to the D Aegon Wastes. Now, I know I'm gonna talk about, I talked about this a lot in the last episode. There's a lot of scanning to do in this game, especially since I'm trying to do a 100% logbook run. So, <laughs> be on the, I'm sorry if my scan visor is like most of the things you'll see in this game, but anyways. This is another violet uh, gate here. This actually is one right here. You'll kind of recognize this area. We were here earlier when we were fighting the splinters and we had to shoot that cable right there last episode. So it kind of just brought us back, back to where we came from. But there's more splinters and... More dark energy is gonna come, and it's gonna possess those little darn little spiders. 
But if you kill them before they get a chance to, they won't even get a chance to, you know, turn into dark splinters. <laughs> they can't, they're kind of like invincible whenever they, uh, whenever they turn too, so you have to be mindful of that. So he gets stuck right there. That's kind of weird. Where's the other one? There it is. Alright. Well, now that we're back in this area, we kind of want to explore this area right here. There's a door right here that needs a missile to open. And as soon as you walk inside, there is an item in here. This is a energy tank. This increases your max energy by 100 points. So it's indicated by the square above my uh, health right there, 99. So now we have 199 health. I'm going to be collecting, I think there's like 14 energy tanks on this game, if I remember correctly. So we're going to be collecting a bunch of energy tanks. By the we're going to have a bunch of health by the end of this game. So anyways, um, we want to go, I do believe we want to go, actually let me, oh yeah, that's right. We got to go back this way. We, <laughs> we shouldn't go back that way because that just take loops us back to the Great Temple. We don't want to do that. All right, let's go through here. More of these creely bugs. I just come right back up this way, and we're gonna lead ourselves back. This is that room where the uh, the Galactic Federation trooper was in the wall right there. But over here, if you guys remember, there was another translator module right here. This is gonna lead our way over to Aegon Wastes. So let's go ahead and do that. And behind there is actually a Luminoth, a dead Luminoth right there, unfortunately. He has lore too. So whenever you see a dead Luminoth, you have to, <laughs> there's going to be more lore for that. The, these are key ba bear lores. I'll get into more detail about that very late game. But as of right now, I'm not reading their entry because they actually have something uh, very important for the very late game, Manhunt. So, or not Manhunt, uh, the Treasure Hunt of, of sorts. But I'll get into more in detail about that later when we need it. So just pick up those whenever you see a dead Luminoth, because you're going to need those. Anyways, this area is a elevator of sorts. This will take us to Aegon Wastes. But there's a couple of things here that we need to get first. First off, there's another, cho uh, almost said Chosen Lore, <laughs> Luminoth Lore here. So this is our heritage. So you want to grab that before you go too far. And finally, if you shoot this thing, there's a missile expansion right here. Missile expansions increase the number of missiles you carry by five. So be sure to pick up any of them if you see them. So you'll probably see a bunch of them just lying and need puzzles in order to solve. But I'm going to be collecting all of them in the game. So anyways, now that we're done in this area, we got to go ahead. We got to head down to Aegon Waste, our first actual area in the game. But yeah, the Luminoff kind of represent the. They kind of remind me a lot of the Chozo from previous Metroid games. So, <laughs> if you get, see me compare them to Chozo, that's one reason why. They kind of remind me a lot of them. Anyways, uh, here in Aegon Waste, there's also stuff that we need to scan for the biology. These are storage stuff. <laughs> if you shoot these things, they'll drop items. That's all that all these are. Each each area has its own specific like pod of sorts that they hold items in. But we're here at Aegon Waste, and there's a bunch of stuff we need to scan. These are new enemies. These are Illuminites. These guys, for some reason, like to go and shift through dimensions and stuff like that. These guys can get kind of annoying to shoot at because. They, like, phase in between dimensions way too much, but, I mean, just a couple of shots and they're, they're dead. There is a, also, this grass right here, and this is another research thing. You scan this, and this is sand grass. <laughs> this is just biology stuff for your logbook. But, and there's also another dead Luminoth right here. Oh, gosh, I see all those bugs coming out there. Dead, it has been dead for 1.1 decade cycles. Body has been... Badly damaged by sandstorms and heat exposure. Judging by the number of blast wounds, the target has been dead long before the desert got to it. Wow. I kind of feel bad for him. Something just killed him before, and he's just sitting there to rot in the sun. That's kind of nasty. But anyways, I welcome you guys to our first major area in the game. Aegon Wastes. Kind of like a desert, uh, 
kind of just a wasteland of, sto of sorts. It's kind of like Badlands. It's kind of a desert, but it also has storms. There's a bunch of stuff to scan here, too. There's a bunch of new enemies. Like this guy right here that pops up out of this game ground right here. This is a sand digger. This guy has two heads. We kind of want to shoot his head because once he... He, ch he alternates between his head. His, like, brain goes through his body way too much time. But as soon as you shoot him a one, one end, he pops his head on the other end. And as soon as you kill both of them... He makes that noise. <laughs> it's really disgusting. <laughs> and he blows up. But there's also another enemy up here that I tried scanning earlier. If you guys remember those sand bats that kind of like were flying out of the save room. If I can get them. There we go. There we go. Sand bats. These guys were flying out of the save room at the end of the last episode. <laughs> These guys are just flying around. They're just little common enemies that'll fly around and just get in your way in a sense. So just kill them all. Just do that. But as soon as we're going to open up this door. And inside is actually a save room. And there's a bunch of sand bats coming out of that. That hole right there. <laughs> but I think I'm going to end this episode here. We just arrived at Aegon Waste. And I think we did a lot of progress. We, we beat a boss and everything. So... Next time we meet in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, we're going to continue onwards in throughout the uh, Aegon Waste. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next episode.